Hello, I'm going to be talking to you about suicide, specifically uh, suicide caused by jumping off of tall buildings or bridges. Um, the main claim is that suicide barriers such as nets or tall uh, fences along the bridges fail to deter people from committing later acts of suicide by jumping. Um, a secondary claim are that people, instead of jumping off of that single uh, bridge with the with the barrier, they will simply substitute it for another way to jump off a building or a bridge. Uh, my secondary claim, or my other, my second, my second secondary claim is that 90% of people committing suicide aren't in a rational state of thinking, so uh, they're clearly not going to be deterred by uh, rational means. My third um, secondary claim is that suicide deterrents fail to have an effect on people when they are going to be jumping more than once. Uh, for my first secondary claim, uh, suicide substitution, records at the office of uh, the chief coroner of Ontario, there was a burial a barrier installed um, on one of the main bridges in Toronto, the Lower Street Viaduct. It's the second most popular bridge to commit suicide by jumping off of. Uh, the first one being the Golden Gate Bridge, which claimed over 1,300 lives. But anyways, uh, the suicide substitution. Records at the chief coroner's office have stated that before the installation of the bridge barrier, there were 56.4 suicides a year. After the installation of the bridge barrier, there were 56.6 suicides per year. So there's no effect on the overall rate of suicides per year. Uh, secondly, the rate of jumping from nearby bridges before the <coughs> barrier was installed was 8.7 suicides per year. But after the installation of the barrier, it rose 63% to a total of 14.2 uh, suicides per year. Buildings in the Toronto area also saw an increase of suicides per year from 83.5 pre-installation to 42.7 post-installation. Uh, my, sec my second uh, claim is that 90% of people who jump are in a rational mindset. Um, an article on mentalhealth.net has stated that 6% of suicides are people Commit, or committed by people with mood disorders such as bipolar, major depression, uh, dysthemia, which is low-grade depression, um, cyclothemia, which is milder, bipolar, and schizoaffective problems. The other 30% of people are afflicted with psychotic disorders such as eating disorders, um, sleep disorders, or war veterans that are afflicted with PTSD or just average people that go with PTSD. Alcohol is also involved in 30% of suicides, and people under the effects of alcohol have impaired judgment and aren't going to be deterred by rational means, such as a barrier that's stopping them. They'll simply just go somewhere else. Uh, my third claim is that suicide deterrents fail to have an effect on people that do it more than once, because clearly, if they're going to do it more than once, it fails the first time. A Journal of American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry said that 71% of people that jump more than once are afflicted with uh, mood or insanity disorders or abuse or drug abuse disorders. So people aren't thinking rationally and they're not going to be deterred by the barriers. Mental health and that has also stated that people who have attempted suicide are 38 times more likely to commit suicide again or attempt it. In conclusion, I'd like to say that suicide barriers fail to deter people from committing suicide by jumping elsewhere because it's, it's just because people can just go elsewhere, they're not thinking clearly, so they're not going to be deterred by rational means, and third, people that have tried to commit suicide once are 38 more times more likely to jump elsewhere. Thank you.